verse 51. Jesus starts here down through verse 56 saying that you have to partake of Jesus. You have to drink Jesus. You have to stay in Jesus. And you say, is this different than believing? No. Salvation, God does. And if God saves someone, they partake of Jesus, they see Jesus, and they stay in Jesus. If God saves them. What, what does all that mean? Well, well, look what he says, verse 51. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, what is the bread? What are we talking about? Are we talking about going to the mass and having put a little round wafer on your tongue? Is that what we're talking about? No. The word is the word of God. The bread is the word of God. The word is the bread is Jesus. Jesus says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and they were the joy and rejoicing in my heart, through his prophet Jeremiah. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every what? Word of God. He equates bread with word of God. And he said, I am the living bread of God come down from heaven. Jesus is the word. Did you know this Bible is different than anything else because this is the absolute perfect representation of Jesus Christ. You understand, he is the word of God. This book records his words, his mind, his will. His plan of salvation. Keep reading to verse 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood. So if the eating uh, Jesus' flesh is eating his word, what's the drinking his blood? In whom we have redemption, even the forgiveness of sins through his blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses me from all unrighteousness. It talks about the, the life of Jesus poured out on the cross. His blood, which is synonymous with his life being poured out, takes care of my sin. It's his justifying death. I drink of that. That means that I, I actually don't just watch it. I participate. That's what salvation is. And finally, verse 56, he who eats my flesh... That allows the word in. Drinks my blood, that is, allows themselves to be washed and cleansed and transformed by the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, abides in me and I in him. You know what Jesus said? It's divine. You can't do that. You can't, you can't eat me, you can't drink me, and you can't abide in me on your own. It's only something God does for us to partake of Christ. Look at verse 63. Here's a, another one. Uh, salvation is of the Lord. I love verse 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. You know what? We can, there's a lot of people that are trying to do CPR on people. They're, <laughs> they're trying to save them. It doesn't work. It's the Spirit that gives life. We present the gospel message, and you don't have to, <clears throat> the Spirit gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Look at verse 65, chapter 6, verse 65. And he said, therefore I say unto you, no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Boy, the people really understood what he said. Look at verse 66. And from that time on, many quit following Christ. They heard him. He said, You guys are just in it for the free food. No. He said, I want you to to actually partake of me. I want you to let me change you on the inside. I want you to be totally partaking of me. No, we don't want that. We want free food and healing and no commitments. Keep going to chapter 7, verse 17. Here's the 11th one. Salvation produces in us. True salvation produces in us submission to the will of God. Verse 17. If anyone wills to do his will, he'll know concerning the doctrine, whether it's from God or whether I speak of my own authority. A believer in the gospel according to Jesus is someone who chooses to do God's will. You say, how do you know that? Because Jesus said to those in Matthew 7 who are going to judgment and to eternal destruction, he says unto you, you never did the will of my Father in heaven. What does that mean? It means a believer at the instant of salvation is changed on the inside to wanting to submit to the will of God. More than anything else, I want to not build my life on the word of God. I want to build my life under it. I want to submit to whatever it is that is the limitation on my life that he has. I want to submit. We live in a very unsubmissive world. I mean, people don't want to be told anything, what to do. I mean, that's, uh, our flesh rebels, but the spirit makes us submissive. 
and we want to do his will.